RDF UI is a module for Drupal 8 created by Sachini Harith for her Google Summer of Code 2014 project. RDF stands for Resource Description Framework, and it provides a standard model for data interchange on the web. This module easily allows you to map schema.org types and properties to Drupal content types and their fields. So if you scroll down, you can see that there are two versions of this, re recommended releases and development releases. I would suggest getting the development release as it supports the late latest version of Drupal 8. I have submitted an issue here, uh, which updates it to work with the latest um, version of Drupal 8, which is beta 4 currently. So let's go ahead and set this up for the latest Drupal dev. So I have installed the latest and cloned it into the Drupal 8 directory right here. So let's go ahead and go to Drupal 8. Now, whoops. Uh, okay, so got to go into workspace and then Drupal 8. Okay, so we're here and we can see that this is the this is a fresh install so if you have drush you can go ahead and go drush download rdf ui and then you can also say that you want to select the version and you can choose one or two and again one is recommended is that's the development version but i will be canceling this since i have um, worked on it and it still hasn't been committed to the development um, tree or branch and so I have a tar archive right here, so I'm going to go ahead and extract this. So, except RDF UI dot tar, and here is the module. So it also contains a sub-module called RDF Builder, which we will get into a little bit later in the video. So now we can go ahead and go to our Drupal site, which is right here, and let's go ahead and go to Extend. Now, if you scroll down here, we can see that there is RDF UI and RDF UI Builder. So for right now, let's go ahead and enable RDF UI. And let's save configuration. All right, so once the configuration options have been saved, now we can go ahead and go to Structure, Content Types, And let's create a new content type right here. For this example, I'm going to be making a content type of a person. So let's go ahead and make this a person. And we can just give this a person name of person, person one. And a description is just a person. And you can see that there's a schema.org mappings right here, a tab which you can click on. And here you can assign it a schema.org type. So if you go ahead and start typing in person, person, and there we go. So we see that person has appeared, so just click on that, and let's click Save and Manage Fields. So now the default body has been created, let's go ahead and add another field to this, and we are going to map some schema.org properties to this. So let's go ahead and just make this a text plane. And let's label this, let's say, uh, job title. Or let's actually go ahead and give them a name first. All right, we can have this limited to one, maximum length 225, that's fine. All right, so this has been created. Now let's go ahead and go back to person one. And let's add another field. And this time we're going to add job title. Okay. So... Let's go ahead and go to content types. And let's manage fields over here. All right, let's add field. Text plane. And let's go ahead and name this job title. Save and continue. Uh, save field settings. And let's go ahead and save those settings as well. And let's add one more field. And let's make this another text plane, and let's label this affiliation. And let's save and continue. All 
All right, so now we've created our fields, but now we need to actually map them. So there's this tab up here next to fields, which you can see it says RDF mappings. Go ahead and click on this. And here you can actually define which properties you want to map to these fields. So for body, we can just go ahead and set this to description. For affiliation, we can go ahead and add affiliation. Job title, we can go job title. And name, we can do name which should be here somewhere. There are also many options like additional name, alternative name, family name, given name. We'll just go with the name. And let's save that. Okay, now once this is saved, we can go ahead and actually create our person. So let's go ahead and go to content. Create content, add content. And let's go ahead and create person And I will name this myself. And let's give them a body here. This is a description about me. Yay. And then we can also, this is just the title, but we can also give a definite name since this is going to be mapped. So let's go ahead and type that name in. And job title, I don't have a job, so let's go ahead and say I am a student and affiliation at a high school. And let's click Save and Publish. Now this will create our first node and you can see that this has been posted right here with our fields that we made, name, job title, and affiliation. Now if we go ahead and inspect element on this, you can see that these are actually mapped. So the property right here is equal to schema colon name. So this is a name and Let's go ahead and check this out for student. And this is mapped to the job title. And affiliation is mapped to affiliation. Now this whole article, if you go ahead and inspect element of this uh, article right here, it should be somewhere here. Right here, this article right here, you can see that this is actually a type of schema person. So this actually says this whole this whole article is of a person, so that defines the schema.org type of this content type. So now, that was a lot of work. We had to create the content type and then add all those fields and then map those fields. Will there be an easier way? That's why there was also RDF UI Builder, the sub-module. So let's go ahead and enable this and see how this can help to extremely help the process of creating a new content type with schema.org mappings. So once you've enabled it, you can go to structure, content types, and you can see that there's a new button added at schema.org content type. So this is exclusively for adding content types with schema.org mapping. So let's go ahead and test this out. So here you can automatically type in which type of uh, thing you want to create. So we want you to create a person again. Again, there are all these options. You can choose web page, place, events, uh, and all these medical symptoms, anything basically. So let's go ahead and just type person and then click next. All right, so once this loads, you can see that there are all these properties that are automatically here from which you can choose from. And we don't have to create all these properties. You can select which data type you want. They have default data types, and you have all these properties. So let's go ahead and see which ones we want for our person. Let's go ahead and give them give them the same things as before. Let's go ahead and give an affiliation. Let's go ahead and give maybe an email, maybe a gender. Let's go ahead and give it the job title again. And let's give them a name right here. All right, so, and you can also give them, for example, an image, which is a type of an image. And there are all these other options for person and all these other co content types. So once you've selected the ones you want for your type, go ahead and click save. 
and this should automatically create our content type and it'll go ahead and give it a random ID so this is GOJR person and it'll create all these fields that we selected now it does not include the body field but that's okay you can go ahead and also add that in later if you want so if you go ahead and check the RDF mappings you can see that all of these are already mapped to the things that we selected and we don't need to do this extra step so now all we need to do from here is go ahead and add the content type so let's go ahead and add this person let's add content and here there are two persons but this was, was the one we created before and this is the new one it also gives it a description of the whole thing uh, of the schema.org description of person alive dead undead or fictional so let's go ahead and click this and here are our fields that we assigned this content type so let's go ahead and give this title again I'll give it my same name let's go ahead and give it an affiliation high school email I'm just going to say Akshay at Colose.net gender male job title we can say student here again and for name we can just go ahead and say Akshay again and let's go ahead and save and publish now here we have our person again you can check if you right click and inspect elements you can see that those mappings have been done but to test it even further you can go ahead and copy the URL and go to Google Structured Data Google Webmasters Tools slash rich snippets that is the URL and this will take you to the Structured Data Testing Tool so go ahead and paste that URL here and click on preview so as you can see Google can get this structured data from your website and it'll take the properties and also all the values and it can put this into the search results so for example since I was a student in a high school it has put these in the search results for the preview right here so there you go that's pretty much how you easily use RDF UI to create mappings of schema.org types and properties to Drupal's content types and fields.